I am a wimp. That fact is one that I won't deny. I never had an interest in sports, and I pretty much just watch anime, play Overwatch, and do this little YouTube thing. I don't know sports, nor do I have a talent for it. I probably wouldn't even be able to score a touchdown in a 1v1 basketball match, even against a classroom of the elite enjoyer. So, like, a 10 year old. However, what I do know is anime. And because it has so many genres, I basically know everything, even sports in a roundabout way. I say this because I've watched Haikyuu. And because I've watched Haikyuu, I can probably play professional volleyball, if I really wanted to. I first watched Haikyuu, actually pretty recently, with my volleyball player friend to guide me through the more technical volleyball stuff. <laughs> Wait, is that even allowed? Yeah, that this show is ass. Yeah, okay, bro. I think I still Shit is ass, ass, ass. This is actually the worst episode. Alright, bro, are we having on Fortnite now? Oh, I don't care your side characters! Oh my god! Oh, uh, dumbass kid. Oh, there's no way there's two seasons left. Yeah, no, I'm gonna take a shit. This shit is so boring. <laughs> oh. Yeah, he doesn't really like anime, but I helped him with the more anime stuff. Oh my god, mommy! I did this all to answer a very specific question. Is Haikyuu a good anime? My name is Noobo Okoa, and let's jump into Haikyuu. Haikyuu, what is it? Haikyuu in Japanese literally means volleyball, and as you can imagine, that is what the show is about. Hinata Shoyo, our protagonist, is a small boy, but you need to be a big boy in order to play volleyball. However, through sheer willpower and hard work, Hinata is able to join the Karasuno volleyball team, which happens to also be the school that his volleyball idol, the Little Giant, attended. Haikyuu tells a story of Karasuno's endeavors to once again reach the top of the volleyball world with willpower and some latent abilities. And I know that this is a lot of people's favorite anime, and I do have a lot of criticism for the show, but hear me out until the end before any angry comments. And if you come to agree with me, or just enjoy the content, leave a like and subscribe, it really helps out a lot. Let's start with the main cast, as this is a character driven show. I mean, it has to be, because it certainly doesn't seem like a plot driven one. The plot for every arc has the exact same formula. Training, match, win. The plot is very simple and easy to follow because of this, but it falls a little short on depth for the same reason. Speaking of short, Hinata is a typical shonen protagonist. He is the same character as Asta, Naruto, and too many more. A genki guy willing to go through any lengths, except vertically, to reach his ultimate goal of being the very best like no one ever was. His rival character, Kageyama, is also the same as too many other shonens. Edgy, bitch, annoying, Sasuke. And yeah, that sums him up pretty thoroughly too. Some might argue that he has had growth and in return is deep, but I just don't think it was a tremendous amount. He went from an absolutely intolerably insufferable asshole to just an insufferable asshole. I guess that's progress though. And that growth has many similarities to the next of the first years. Tsukishima is also a dickhead, and I didn't say was a dickhead because he still is one. His growth was also very minor, and no lasting effect came from that one hype moment. While we are on the topic of that one scene, I wanted to praise something that the show does very well. It gets his viewers hyped. I, a critic of the show who gave no shits about Tsukishima, too got super hyped in the Tsukishima Yosha moment. This show gets its audience hyped up in a very simple yet effective fashion. Often, with this show, a simple well timed Yosha or Shinkuro Kogeki can get anyone hyped. The high tension screams and the overcoming of hardships really makes you root for the characters and it makes you happy when they succeed, even though the characters themselves don't have much substance. There are a few other characters I would like to mention. Azumane, Daichi, Sugawara, Tanaka, and Nishinoya. I know it's kind of a lot, but bear with me. It is a whole volleyball team after all. The first three are all the straight men of the group each with a little, mostly unimportant quirk. Azumane has some self-esteem issues going on that are pretty quickly resolved. They have this overused bit where people say he looks old because of his beard and he sulks because of it. But other than that, there's nothing really that separates him from the next character. Daiji is a true straight man with not much personality other than that. 
However, his lack of personality mixed with a cast full of energy creates a nice little dichotomy of moods between the characters. Having a straight man can create this effect, but having three of them is a bit much and instead seems like they just forgot to write in characters. I'm not too sure about Sugawara. From what I see in this show, he seems to be a chill, friendly dude. But I can't quite confirm that because we simply don't see enough of him. A pretty common theme in the show seems to be Fox Sugawara. He gets benched as the first thing, he rarely gets any meaningful screen time, and the times he does is mostly just for a little cameo to remind us that he still exists. I think they made the most of what they could with him though. His struggles of feeling replaced by someone better, but ultimately wanting the team to succeed had a strong emotional impact. However, we never get any follow up to this, leaving that whole thing as just a forgotten about side thing. I really want to see more of him, as I like what I've seen of him, but I also worry that this really is all there is to him, so the next best thing would have been to just not have him there to begin with. I don't hate him or anything, but he just doesn't provide anything for the show. Next, we have the buzz cut mental titan himself, Tanaka. Tanaka, who often gets outshined by the bright, talented first years, doesn't let this get to him. Ever. He always tries his best and pushes through whatever hardships he may face, regardless of how far behind he is. Honestly, I'm gonna sound crazy for this, but Tanaka has more of what it takes to be a good protagonist than Hinata. His interactions with every character suggest a strong and genuine bond, he seems like a genuine, strong, caring dude with legitimate setbacks, and so many more desirable qualities in not only a character, but as a person and an athlete. Lastly is my favorite character, Nishinoya. He is just a little ball of energy, always brightening the mood of the scene. He's mostly used for gags, but when he's in a match, that dude plays. Nishinoya is the most talented player in Karasuno in the anime, according to my friend. It's actually crazy. Wait, wait, wait. It's, it's wait so who's the best in Karasuno right now? Bro, it. Right now, easily Nishinoya. Sadly, most of the spotlight is taken by Hinata and Kageyama, but this guy is a different beast. He's fun, talented, has a perfect voice actor who also plays Bakugo in My Hero Academia, has a sick hairstyle, Nishinoya is a likable, well-written character. He doesn't have much depth, but he's great at what he's supposed to be. Finally, we have the most crucial part in any anime, the girls. The girls play a huge part- Nah, I'm just kidding. The two girls of the show are just there to look pretty, and they really have no part in the show. Except Saiko Nesan. I won't elaborate further, but she is just the best. As you may have noticed, the characters are really hit or miss. The characters are all relatively shallow, and all that really matters is if they are likable or not. But what they do consistently miss on are the side characters. For every match in the show ever, you are able to tell who loses just by character design alone. For example, who do you think wins this match? The pretty obviously side character team that we will probably never see again, or this team? These side teams play the role of getting beat, with none of them having unique motivations or character. They play the same roles as Bokoblins in Legend of Zelda, or Nappa in Dragon Ball Z, or the big bad guys army of henchmen in any isekai ever. But the show tries to make us care about them by telling us how talented they are and showing us their backstory, all while we just want to see the big match. There were too many episodes that I knew I could skip without actually missing out on anything before I actually watched it. Though I didn't because, you know, I kinda have to review it. Each side character has a single job they must always fulfill. These two dudes, exposition dumps. This guy, which I really hate his hair, to lose. Ushijima, the final boss. None of the characters are anything outside of what they seem like. The show attempts to make us care, but I really only ever gave a surface level shit about any of them. Not speaking of talent, and just jumping straight to the next point, because quite frankly, I couldn't think of a good transition, this show has some insane power creep. Every single batch starts with the opponents being overwhelmingly powerful and making them seem out of Karasuno's reach. And when Karasuno wins and proves that they are ultimately better, it means that they overcame that insane difference. Then, the next team they go against is also shown to have this unimaginably big difference, which they beat again. Shiro Torizawa is seen to be the best of the best, unchallenged by any team in the country. But then Karasuno beats them, which should mean that they are now the best of the best. 
Then, Inarizaki pulls up and is shown to be even more out of reach. Then, Nekoma does the same thing, and so on and so forth. And even though Karasuno has lost before, they have never really lost, which I don't like. When they lost to Aoba Josai, which off topic, but I really like their chance. They don't really go into the fact that Oikawa was simply better than them. They instead say that Hinata was still new to volleyball and doesn't have much experience, which is why they lost. And even though it still leads to them trying harder in the end, it doesn't sit right with me that this loss wasn't really a loss. This juvenile attitude persists through most of the show, which removes the fear of loss and the devastation of it when they do. It's the same reason that no one cares anymore if Goku dies in Dragon Ball. They have just revived him so many times that everyone knows that he can't really die. And that is not good. You should feel empathetic towards the characters and be happy or sad when they win or lose, but this choice forms a disconnection on how we should feel versus how we actually feel. The show portrays Hinata and Kageyama as very talented volleyball obsessed people, and they really are. That's kind of a problem. I honestly think that the show could use more slice of life fillers every once in a while to give us a break. Even speaking in real life terms, improvement comes in during when you are taking a break, so it doesn't make sense that it constantly goes from training to match to match without ever resting. I know there are time skips between each match, but for the viewers, there's never really a break. They could replace the matches that don't matter at all to give us more interactions between characters. This could also make us care more about the characters outside of volleyball. Also, about them being crazed volleyball lunatics, I for some reason always found it really cheesy whenever they did this weird serious face thing. Is that just me or do other people feel the same way? Let me know in the comments. My volleyball player friend explained many things to me about the actual volleyball aspect of the show. And according to him, the characters have some nearly impossible feats. Even Hinata and Kageyama's quick should be impossible, especially at a high school level. Many of the feats are superhuman and often magical, but the show doesn't treat these as such, which takes away all the self-awareness. Now, I know they have to do the cool shonen stuff, but it seems very unsure about whether they should do that or not. It will make the show a lot more fun and self-aware if they did something like they did with Kageyama's first set, where they basically give him a Sharingan. It was ridiculous, fun, and cool but they lose that sense of self-awareness as the show progresses, give other characters special moves that they call out, give the boss fire trails when it's going super fast, do some wild explosions with slow-mo shots, go wild with it. Like Demon Slayer for example. If you didn't know, the elements in Demon Slayer aren't actually there, but they add a sense of cool shonenness. Do the same with Haikyuu. Simply just going all in with these creative decisions would without a doubt make the show better in every way. I'm not going to sugarcoat it, but this show is childish. Everything from the lack of death in characters to the power creep to add tension is there to seemingly cater to younger audiences. But that isn't exactly a problem. As someone who is actively looking for qualities of the show as a reviewer, I found lots of problems. But someone who is just watching for fun or someone who doesn't know any better might find it super fun. And that is perfectly fine. This is a shonen anime. Shonen literally translates to small year, but it means young boy, and this anime is perfect for them. And don't get me wrong, this show was fun for me as well. Whenever there was a chant, I would join in. I would join the team as if I were a part of them with the yoshas and emotions they felt. This show does a very good job in that. It is fast paced, easy to consume, fun, and hype. How I felt when watching the show was very similar to how I felt while watching Demon Slayer. Neither go really deep with their stories, but are still cool to look at and fun to watch. That was just my personal preference, but there is a very easy way to tell if you would like the show or not. Do you think you will like it? If yes, you will probably like the show because it is exactly what it is on the surface. If you don't like the genre and think that you won't like it, you probably won't. So is Haikyuu a good anime? Yes. It definitely is. It does its job of being fun with fast pacing, high octane action scenes, and good animation. But how good is it? The answer to that question may be disappointing to some of you, but it isn't the masterpiece people make it out to be. Strictly relative to the genre, it is probably the best out there, but just as an anime, there were just too many flaws in it. I personally don't think that it deserves its 8.44 score on my anime list. 
I personally would give it in between a 6 and 7, which is still on the positive side of things. I think the show is good, so don't say I called it bad. I enjoyed the show, and if I wasn't watching it to review it, I might have given it the same score Mal has scored it. Even while watching it as a reviewer, I still enjoyed it quite a bit and I will be finishing the show as it comes out. I am very excited for the future of the show, and I've heard some spoilers online and I'm excited for when it gets animated. And there you have it. Now you know a complete online stranger's opinion on Haikyuu. It was time well spent though. And if you enjoyed this video, YouTube thinks that you might like this video too, so maybe check it out. My name is Noah Boakoa, and as always, thanks for watching.